So welcome to Hailing Island Sailing Club where finally we're doing some competitive sailing, albeit informal. Just save a round shoulder, hey, we can go. Okay, so it was a perfect day. Quite breezy actually when we launched, which led to a few boats uh, decided not to race. But by the time we got to race course, it was a perfect kind of 15 knots. Southeasterly, which is a bit of a weird direction for us. We're racing between Sandy, just off the clubhouse, beating up wind across the channel to Calvert, then downwind back around the same mark. Um, so the unique situation we had for this day was the tide going in quite strong and what happens is as it flows past the sailing club it back eddies and you get a kind of a southerly current just along the shore so that was a key feature of the racing. Right so we're supposed to be doing gate starts but you'll notice this kind of looks a bit chaotic so yeah hands up this went totally wrong. What's supposed to happen is the Pathfinder or Rabbit starts off uh, on port from a mark. As you can see in the right of the shot, a few boats line up on um, on starboard tack. And as you as the Rabbit sails on port, these boats or the fleet kind of ducks the Rabbit and they're racing on starboard. And once all the boats have sail behind between the transom and the mark then rabbits free to attack and start racing uh, but this kind of didn't go to plan we got really high up we just ended up having to spin around behind the pathfinder who was um, Tom Hewitt's and so anyway bit of a mess up at the start so kind of ignore that we end up with a boat full of water just going out towards the left hand side um, trying to look to get across this channel sail free and fast and get in the shallows of the Winner Bank. So here we are, tacking on to port. You can see in the map in the bottom right, we're just in the shallows, and pretty much laying the woman mark. And that's Tom Hewitt's in ahead, just tacked. He's got a good lead on us. He was a pathfinder, and obviously wasn't involved with all that kind of rubbish, um, twizzling around at the start where we messed it up. So Hewitt's around the uh, around the woman mark, kite popped. We just tack in ahead of Tommy Darling here, um, just managed to get round in front of him, so pretty neck and neck. What was difficult was rounding this mark, it was right on the edge of the bank, as you can see in the map on the bottom right, so you want to head up, but the shallows are just to the left of shot, so if you head up and get planing too early, you'll run out of, um, run out of water. So up to speed here, over, over eight knots, and just looking for a good moment to drive away before we hit these shallows. Nice little drive there, pop the kite. And the tide's going in, so as we go out into the middle of this channel, it should be helping more. But it's also taking a few knots off the wind speed, so it's not the big gain you might imagine. And you can just see appearing uh, in the front of shot going underneath the spinnaker is the Hewittons, they've got a pink kite, you might just get a glimpse of that underneath our white kite. They've got a, a clear lead now, but um, if you put a, a jibe in, just a loose jibe covering them. Oh, nice jibe, sails pop through, let's have a look at that in slow motion. Straight under the toe strap, way out on the side, hand swapped, all the sails popped immediately, crew brings through the jib, and then working the weight out onto the side. Jabbing back into the Lewin Mark, we make a little gain on the Hewitsons here. I think they jived a little bit early. You can see them just behind our kite running quite square and deep into the mark and they lose a bit of speed. I mean, we're still running deep and we're coming significantly wider than them. So round just ahead of us, but we carry a bit of speed. I think because they were running deep, they do quite a sharp mark rounding and that kind of costs them as you'll see in a second. As we go around, get a nice wide in, tight out mark rounding. And this is critical because we're kind of heading over to this uh, back eddy. You can see a scum line, we're just passing over here. And this is the back eddy where we hit the current which is travelling south and lifting us up the course. You can see the transits on the post, we're just on an absolute escalator being lifted up. And we manage through our tight mark rounding just to hold this 
port tack a bit longer and get further up the shore in this eddy. Stay in the eddy a bit longer before tacking out. Three or four, four boat lengths more than your Hudson's. That just allows us to gauge up on them to windward. And now we're on starboard heading across the channel. As soon as you get into the main channel, you're fully against the tide. So you want to sail free and fast, get through this channel, get over to the um, to the winner bank in the shallows before you can tack onto port for your approach to win mark. Do you see the Hewitsons left of shot there? You can see we've gauged upon them to windward quite a lot and we're kind of working out whether we can cross them or call them out on starboard. And actually go for a tack on the lee bow, which that's a bit of a tactical mistake really. A tack on the lee bow and normally you'd be able to squeeze them out from here. You just see them in the edge of shot behind my behind my body. And normally you'd want to squeeze up on them, but actually we're just kind of like two boat lengths further out into the channel. It makes it very hard for us to get any sort of squeeze on them. It becomes apparent that we're digging in for this woman mark and they're gonna... I mean, we can't tack on to starboard now because we won't be able to complete our tack in time. And they're just gonna hold us here all the way to the ley line and tack around the mark. I think really what we should have done is we had a piece of them when we were on starboard and we should have, you know, called starboard on them. They would have had the decision then to either bounce into a tack, doing two more tacks and let us ahead. Or they would have ducked us and they would have been the ones out in more current and we would have been the ones on the um, on the kind of shallow side holding that advantage but yeah a bit of a mistake for me there again you can see we're not really making any grounds on them but we're, we're trying to squeeze up hard got the boat re rolled over to windward but no good they've held us all the way to this ley line now and I'm just looking over my shoulder waiting for them to tack they've just in a con totally controlling position. Bit of a missed opportunity if I'd played that a bit better really we could have got ahead of them there. Yeah we squeezed up on them we've done quite well because we're in more tied but we're kind of past the ley line now and Hewitson's just holding us there they go go for the tack we tack in as well. You can see they've you know we're over the ley line they've give themselves a nice round, rounding and a decent kind of one boat length lead. We go straight into jibe set, I just want to split and do something different but have to do this awkward kind of low jibe set to get behind Tommy Darling and just don't really have that much pace, not quite enough wind to get up on the side and um, yeah we're in the main current, we jibe back and you'll see the Hewitsons with the pink kite just uh, or purple kite just just again the other side of our white kite and they've they've held some good breeze down that winter bank side of the course and yeah they're comfortably across us again maybe a small gain three or four boat lengths to them I can see the patch of breeze that they were in on the right hand side so we just hold on on starboard drive just see the speed increasing now over nine knots crew moves the weight out we're in that pressure, we're kind of thinking if we can soak down, get across them, good ley line into the finish, we might just get them into the finish on this on this second lap. Just holding the plane, got to go for the jibe there. It's a good call on the ley line, but actually the breeze filled in for the Hewitsons as well and they've, they've crossed that bow, jibing in for the finish now as well, so super close. We really had an opportunity probably to get the win in that race on that second beat. Uh, should have held on the starboard and forced them to either duck or do the extra tack. But yeah, really good race. Really fun. Rabbit run starts, bit of informal racing. So yeah, really happy to get back into it and show you a bit of bit of race footage. Felt like this time would never come. So um, yeah, hopefully get a bit more of this. Looks like we're going to do a bit of informal racing at Hisk. Hopefully you guys can do the same and take care and talk to you again soon.